So looking at some problems here, like the first one, 3x squared. Now, if we're talking about finding an inverse function for this one, we're going to have we're going to have problems because 3x squared. If we notice here, the the function itself doesn't pass the horizontal line test, so it's a function, but it it won't get us an even inverse function because it falls, stops, and rises. So we've done. It's not. It's not going to have the same gradient all the way through, or only stopping, and but it's it's not completely rising or falling. So the problem is, if we're going to get an inverse function, we have to restrict our domain. So getting our inverse function, what does it look like? Well, the the function itself, we swap the x and y's around, and then divide by three and take the square root. So technically, we're getting plus or minus the square root of x on three. So to restrict our domain, what I need to do is either look at the situation where I'm going on the side of the, the y-axis and either going that side or we're going to go that side. So in this case, I've gone to the positive side. So if it's not defined, then it's up to you which one you want to do. So a, a graph here sort of starts to get a little bit harder to see, but technically that's on the side of the, the, either side of that line y is equal to x because and that should be something you graph every time when you're drawing inverse functions. Draw your two fun you're drawing your functions up, but you want y is equal to x, and it will go through at those two points. So, and notice I've only got the top half drawn because I've decided my domain here. I'm going to restrict for my for three x squared to be x being greater than or equal to zero. So that would mean that my y my my range here for my inverse function would be y is greater than or equal to zero. So we're going to get that situation. The the range for this one, well, again, that's y is greater than zero. So the domain for the inverse function would be the situation where uh, x is going to be greater than zero or greater than or equal to zero. So which makes sense if you look at the square root of x. So we either have this situation where we restrict our we, we, we either take either side, so we restrict our domain one way or the other, so we would be able to form that horizontal line test, or we have the situation where our restricted domain gives us a function which is always rising or always falling. There. Let's have a look at the next example, x minus 3 all squared. Well, here again, it's a parabola. We need to restrict the domain, so we're either restricting it to the situation where x is greater than 3, or x is less than or equal to 3. So we get one of the two ways. I've chosen x is greater than or equal to 3. If I chose x is less than or equal to 3, it would still give me a, an inverse function, except it would be like that. It would just be the opposite of that, going through x is equal to 3. y is equal to 3 there. So notice again, we're getting our reflection where the curves cross. x, y is equal to x will go through that, and we get other critical point would be well, seeing the function there is from 3, 0 it would swap around and be at 0, 3 there approaches infinity that way approaches infinity towards x so the domains and range are swapping around y is equal to the absolute value of x well the absolute y is equal to the absolute value of x you, you can see would be along that line there because that's y is equal to x so that would be the positive arm there and on the negative side it goes up there so Really, when we reflect it, you're going to get our, the reflection there being along this line again. It's a bit hard to draw. I'm not getting very accurate there. Or the other part would be that you're going to get going down this way. Now, again, that's not going to give us a function. Notice if we do a horizontal line test, it's not giving us a function. So we have to restrict our domain. So if I restrict my domain to being x is greater than or equal to 0, it would be up here. If I restrict on the domain of this one, it's going to give me that line there. If I restrict it to x less than or equal to zero, it's going to reflect this part of the curve, and that's going to be reflected in the in line y is equal to x there. So it's it's either going to be all along line y is equal to x if we take x greater than zero, or if x is less than or equal to zero, it's going to be a uh, along the curve there, uh, on this curve here, which would be the line y is equal to minus x as such. y is equal to 2 to the power of x. Well, this is not a problem. The curve rises all the way through. So it's, that's not going to have a problem where we can have to restrict our domain. Because our domain 
is going to be, and because it's all rising, then when we reflect it, the curve there is all rising. And the ref reflection there would be log of x to the base 2. Remember, if you can take the definition of a logarithm, this would end up being x being equal to log of base 2. Right, and we take the reciprocals, that when you swap it over, it becomes y and x, so that's where we get that one. So that's that's the reflection there. That's all good. Again, critical point. Where does it go through? To the power of zero is one. So it goes through one zero. That's why next value is a swapping over there. This one again, parabola. We need to restrict our domain because it fails the horizontal line test in that one. So again, the critical point here is halfway between zero and three, so at one and a half. So in this case, I've restricted my domain of the function there to be greater than one and a half or three on two. So we have that situation. So given that, I'm only taking this half of the curve and reflecting it. So notice it's reflecting with y is equal to x. Uh, we get the, the one and a half there. So it'll be one and a half on the y and the x values. The y value here will swap around with the x value here. A little bit over minus a little bit over minus two there so that's where we get it that's how we can draw a function and we want a function we don't want a relation this time we're again on most of these functions I'm, I'm just taking to the positive side of it again you could take it to the negative side it's up to you but again parabola concave down and we've gone x is greater than or equal to zero and restricted our domain that way so as such that's the part that's reflecting there is, is intersecting and the reflections are starting to occur so where it goes to at zero nine and now becomes nine zero it's going towards negative infinity there so when our x values start to go towards negative infinity that way again another parabola this one's parabolas are good to show the idea that we need to restrict our domain because that's what has start that has to start to happen so we start, we, we get the situation where we're restricting it from minus 1. So x is greater than minus 1, so y becomes greater than minus 1, or equal to minus 1. And so we get our y values of 4, minus 4 and above. So our x values here become minus 4 and above. And here's the one we talked about before, y is equal to 1 on x. So if we look at y is equal to 1 on x, that would be our function. So that's our nice hyperbola. We draw up y is equal to x, but if we start to look at it and look at y is equal to x, and uh, 1 on x, we start to notice that we get a reflection every time in y is equal to x. So that's why it becomes an inverse function. When it becomes an inverse function, it's an inverse, it's, it's, it's the same thing. So that's, you can see it very quite clearly with the graph that 1 on x will reflect itself in y is equal to in in the line y is equal to x which is the definition of an inverse function it can where, where it gives us the reflection there so as we said we know it's a special one we, we showed it with uh algebraically but here it is graphically and we can see why we are able to get that inverse function in this situation